Well, we're going to stick now with the theme of technology and engineering because our first guest on the show, uh, who we're going to welcome in just a moment, is a terrific engineer and metrologist, Chad Chrysostomo of Faro Technologies. Faro, of course, as you all know, is an industry leading provider of 3D measurement, imaging, and realization technology. Faro's mission is to help today's high tech manufacturers reduce inspection times, scan materials with challenging contrast, reflectivity, and part complexity and produce high definition data that's reliable, repeatable, and highly accurate. To answer this need, Faro recently released its newest product, the Faro Edge ScanArm HD, a lightweight and portable coordinate measuring machine that offers both contact as well as non-contact measurement. Dirk is gonna be back in time to host a webinar on this very topic called Next Generation 3D Scanning, Fast, High Definition, and Affordable, which we'll be bringing to you this coming Tuesday, March 10th, at our usual time of 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Chad Chrysostomo, again, the technical product manager for the Farrow Arm product line, will be the presenter of this webinar. And now, to explore some of the topics that he and Dirk are gonna be covering next week, we're very pleased to have Chad join us now via Skype. Hello, Chad. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Good, good to see you again. This is your second time, I think, on the show. We're happy yeah, to have you is. back, of course. Um, well, let's jump right into it. Uh, capture rates for scanners, as we, we many of us know, uh, keep climbing. Uh, Faro's mm -hmm. new Edge, uh, Edge Scan Arm HD, for example, captures more than half a million points. I think the number is, is 560,000 points per second. Uh, but right. do you think there's a trade-off between capture rates and accuracy? Um, I think there is a trade-off, but to a certain extent, uh, precision-wise, uh, fast capture rate's great because as you move the LP across a part, you get a nice, even distribution of points. Uh, the more points you take, the more information there is to average out on the surface, and that results in more consistent data, I believe. Uh, however, if we're talking about metrology grade accuracy, you know, on the uh, micron level, um, I would say that capture rate doesn't really affect accuracy uh, as much. I would say the accuracy is more affected by the range of the laser that you have. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the applications? I mean, what are, what are some of the industries and sectors that we're talking about here uh, in which the, these capture rates and accuracy really are, are most important? Uh, we'll start off anything with plastics. Uh, we're big in machining and metalwork. Uh, we also have, uh, you know, any place that requires reverse engineering. Um, 3D printing is also another big industry that we're in as well. Uh, aerospace and the automotive industry. Yeah, those are all those are all ones that we, we hear a lot of that are, that are using your equipment. Mm -hmm. um, now, the last few trade shows that, that we've been to, I, I'm speaking now for, for Dirk as well as myself and the rest of the team in the Quality Digest, uh, everyone's uh -huh. been touting blue light. So why should we care, uh, what does it mean uh, when we talk about what color a scanner's light is? All right, uh, well, our previous models actually employed uh, red lasers for the laser line probe. Uh, when a red laser actually projects onto a surface at a specific angles, uh, laser dispersion occurs. And that laser dispersion can be interpreted as noise by an LLP camera. Um, when an LLP camera views the same data, but with a blue laser, um, it actually results in less noise. So you get more accurate data as well as cleaner data. Uh, this is great for when you're trying to scan a reflective surface or a diverse material in general. So, it's, so again, it's, it's, it's a color spectrum issue, and I'm, I'm not sure I exactly understand what, what that is in terms of the, the blue light in particular. Uh, we prefer to call it a speckle suppression, so mm -hmm. it's just cleaner data. Cleaner data, okay. So basically, you, you can acquire better data, bring better data in, cleaner data of those 560,000 points, again, that we, we've talked about, of course. Right. Um, so, all right, so let's back up a little bit and talk a little bit about the, the, the mechanics of this, the, 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 uh, the physical. Uh, hardware mechanics of this. What are the advantages of a scanner uh, that would be attached to a portable arm as opposed to a handheld scanner? Okay, well, a handheld scanner actually relies on stitching scans together as well as uh, depth perception. I think two advantages that a portable scan arm has over uh, handheld scanners are better accuracy and better resolution. Uh, we have better accuracy because we use the arm as a localizer to track the LP as it moves in space. Uh, we also have better resolution because of the optics that we employ inside the laser line probe uh, for more affordable price. Um, 
I also think another advantage that we have is that regardless of how complex the shape of the part is, whether it's simple or complex, excuse me, um, you don't have to rely on sticker targets. And that's, that's the arm right there, that right behind you, that we're going to be looking at here, uh, I guess, on Tuesday, uh, correct? Correct. Yep, you are cool. correct. Uh, we'll also be doing a live demonstration of the HD abilities. That's cool. Well, we talked earlier about how scanners are, are capturing more and more points per second. Again, the number, which I've said now three times, because I think it's cool, is <laughs> 560,000 <laughs> points per second. Yeah. So what, what problems does that pose in terms of, of crunching the data in a point cloud that might have, I mean, when you talk about it, I mean, ultimately that point cloud might have tens of millions of points. So what does that present in terms of, of data analysis? Okay, no, that's an excellent question. Uh, you know, accepting loads of point cloud data can slow down a program uh, very easily especially if the user is not that savvy with point clouds. You know, but just like video games and smartphones and tablets, laser scanning is actually evolving to be more and more demanding on computer uh, processing as well as requiring more RAM. Um, it's important to educate our consumers that upgrading to a high-definition laser line probe uh, will require updating your hardware as well because we're really pushing the limits of technology. You know, we're talking about high-definition data, but you're also getting quality resolution along with it. Uh, but honestly, in the end, I think it all depends about your uh, application. Are you doing reverse engineering or are you doing inspection? If you're doing reverse engineering, you want to try to keep as much point clouds as possible. But when you're concerned with inspection, uh, you're more concerned with the accuracy, so you can try to tone down the capture rate a little bit, and that'll decrease some of those, uh, the chugging the computer has to do for processing. Yeah, that's what I like about the, the technologies we're seeing develop now is it's really flexible. I mean, you, know, you don't have to necessarily use it to the nth degree of what the potential is in terms of data. You can scale it down a little bit based on what your system and your application is, correct? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, one other thing I can mention is that, you know, point cloud softwares are actually getting smarter as well. And you know, you can try to play around with the filters that they employ. For example, like decimation, which increase, uh, actually only uses about you know one tenth or one half of the data that you actually grab, uh, so that's great for inspection. Uh, we also employ a filter on the laser line probe called a movement filter. So if, if the uh, laser line probe moves a specific distance, it'll take a point. But if it stays still, it won't capture any data, and that'll save you time on you know <clears throat> collecting too much data. Gotcha. So basically everything that we just talked about, it kind of we, we talked about in, in a short time frame, but the things that we talked about there are things that we're going to be expanding on uh, at greater depth, obviously, in the one hour webinar we have coming up, uh, I guess, on Tuesday. Yep. Great, great, cool. Well, everybody out there should, of course, uh, look forward to that webinar. Uh, again, it's, it's going to be Tuesday, this Tuesday coming up March 10th uh, at our normal time of webinars, which is 2 p.m. Eastern. 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, keep your, your eye on your email inbox, everybody out there, for details about how to register. We're, we're sending e-blasts out to you all right now to get in on that. You can also visit the registration page through the link, which is right below Chad's name uh, on the, the video player screen right down there. So Chad, again, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to look forward to seeing you and Dirk on Tuesday to talk a little bit more uh, about your new technology and, and how pe people can use it. Definitely. Great. Nice talking to you, Mike. Good talking to you too, Chad. Thanks again for joining us. Sure thing. Good. All right, again, yes, so come, be sure to join us there. You can see it on your screen, I think. Yeah, there it is right there. Uh, the, uh, the next generation 3D scanning, fast, high definition, and affordable. Uh, that webinar with Chad and Dirk is going to be coming up here on Tuesday the 10th at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, so make sure you register for it today. Okay.